What do you think that young men get wrong when it comes to dating? Um, well, a lot. Um, I'd say a lot. I'd say one, men do not understand actually how to like create a strong connection with a woman on a date. Mm. They go about it the wrong way. Most guys feel like they have to impress the girl on a date. They got to tell them some really cool stories, be charming and charismatic. Um, they have to put on this show, bring up little slight things that are going to impress the girl. And women are very, very smart. They actually are a lot more socially um, uh, smart than men. And a lot of times they'll see through that. And instead, okay, so most guys, they'll go on a date and they'll think it went amazing when it went really shitty. And then like, why am I getting ghosted? The girl didn't message again. Um, and they essentially just deliver themselves on a silver platter. What guys that are good with women do is they talk like maybe 20, 30% of the time they sit back and they just kind of ask questions. And a lot of dating coaches will say that being the interview guy is wrong. Asking questions is wrong. It's complete opposite. Um, it's, it's, they do not know what they're talking about. Sure. If you go and approach a girl in a club and you're asking her questions, it's not going to go over very well, but if you have a girl on a date and she's interested in you, the only thing you're there to do is to learn as much about her, get her talking, get her opening up, get her sharing stuff that she feels like, Oh my God, I've been on, you know, 10 dates in the last year and no one's known this much about me. Um, the more the woman starts opening up and sharing with you and the more you play a little bit of a mystery the stronger the connection gets. And so if you can be the one really asking the questions, getting the girl to really talk, to open up, and don't just stack question, question, question. Like, you know, it's like you have a question, she's talking, it becomes a thread. And then the other thing that, you know, most guys do on, on dates when the girl's really freaking hot and they're, they're like, oh my God, this girl's freaking beautiful. They kind of become a bit reactive and they let the girl kind of hold the frame and they kind of react. And so the girl says, you know, this, and then, you know, she creates this hoop and then you start talking, okay, oh yeah, this is my job, this is what I do. I don't do any of that, okay? Most often if I go on a date, uh, most times the woman will really be in her feminine because of my energy, she'll be a bit more soft and reactive and giggly. Um, but sometimes, you know, if a girl's just kind of has a bit of a harsh energy and wants to test, I will, uh, I will take over the frame. And I'll ask her, you know, ask her some question. And then sometimes she'll try and throw it back at me. And I'll just, I'll just stop like, Hey, you know, one second, like order a drink and I'll keep breaking it down. Right. I'll keep kind of breaking, creating these little micro breaks that force her to enter my frame because women like the natural dynamic between men and women is for the man to lead. Okay. When a woman is leading, okay. They don't get attracted. They don't like it. They, a lot of women, sometimes they have to lead. They have no choice, but to lead because they're guy doesn't know how to lead effectively. He's not taking action. He's not assertive. He doesn't have strong boundaries. He doesn't have the skill set to really let the woman just be able to relax and follow, you know, because that's the natural accordance. And it doesn't have to be like that all the time. Um, but in general, the man is leading, right? Um, and so you want to be in a position where, you know, you can hold the frame. Why have men become more feminine and women become more masculine over the past 30 years in our lifetimes? Um, well, there's probably many different reasons and I don't, I haven't like, you know, really like put together a thesis on this, but I can say there's many, there's probably different reasons. Um, I'd say a lot of men are growing up in single, single homes with a single mom. I mean, I know I grew up in, you know, my father passed away when I was 11. Um, and so pretty much 12 on, I didn't really have a, a father role model. And I had to figure this stuff out completely on my own. Um, it makes a big difference if you have like a father there to kind of show you the ropes, especially in your teenage years, early 20s. So I think more now than ever, uh, men are kind of being growing up in single family homes. Um, that's sort of one reason. I mean, we are seeing a, a pretty massive drop in testosterone across the board in men. Um, and that can, that can have a, like that, biology can have effect on actions and stuff like that. Um, but mostly, you know, what do you think, by the way? I think there's so many different factors out there. One of them I would say is education. And we, we've put education on a pedestal for women. Mm -hmm. And so women become more and more educated. And thus it is leading to a society where women are outpacing men in yeah. education, but now they're seeking 
for and, and I, there's well you know what i will say you know I, i'm pretty sure as far as the research i've seen uh women in like their you know late 20s early 30s are outperforming men in their late 20s uh, early 30s in the job market yeah um that's true like uh, for the majority i mean at the very top echelon of success i believe you do see more men in in uh uh still outperforming um but there's different variables for that um but even like in our culture you know tv shows and movies the what we're seeing is very very different the male female di dynamics you see in tv shows these days are very different than what it was 30 years ago um so there's different sort of reasons um for you know what's going on yeah